So we took a look at the DCA strategy tool, which was on Ben's website in the Cryptoverse. And what we took a look at was various crypto and digital assets across a wide spectrum, just to see how things would do. And what we did is we took uh, some of the uh, larger cap cryptos. We took a look at Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB, Solana, Doge, ADA, Chainlink, and Near Protocol. And we actually just did the simulation to put in $100 every week starting on Monday. And of course, this would actually start on September 1st, 2023. Now, you can get access to this tool. It's, there's a link in the description for Into the Cryptoverse. This part is actually free. But what we can see, and of course, everybody will talk about their own project that they, they have a lot into. I'm no different. But I was kind of surprised at the outcome. Going back to September 2023, we can see that it wasn't Solana, it wasn't Doge, it wasn't Bitcoin, it wasn't Chainlink that's done so well. It was near. And Nier was up 261%, and the next closest competitor would be Solana at 241%. And we can see that uh, it's been on a rocket ship for quite some time, Near Protocol. It's number 19 as far as uh, market cap. And we can look, take a look over the last year. It's been uh, going up uh, quite quickly. So the question you have to ask yourself is, is, why is that? Is that because it's a lot of speculation or just a bunch of DGENs getting into some random coin? I don't think that's what it is. I think people who are paying attention have kind of figured out what Nier is doing and the partnerships that they have. I mean, look, they've got Alibaba, which is essentially the, the Amazon of China and also globally. They have partnerships with Arbitrum, Cosmos, Eigenlayer, Google, Sweat, Polygon, and a whole host of others. And they're actually have been building in the bear to crush it in the bull. And there's something that actually missed my desk. And I just found this today, uh, March 26, 2024, Near Protocol, will let users sign transactions on third-party chains from single wallet, from one single wallet, all different types of crypto projects on different chains. So I'm just gonna go over this real quick. Near Foundation launched Chain Signatures, a protocol that will let users sign transactions on third-party blockchains from one single Near account. It enables Near accounts, including smart contracts, to sign transactions on any blockchain. Any Near account can control any number of addresses on all blockchains. And lastly, to finish up, Chain Signatures currently supports Ethereum, Cosmos, Dogecoin, Bitcoin, XRP Ledger, and will soon support Solana, Ton, Network, Polkadot, and a whole host of others. So this totally missed uh, my information as I become overloaded, but I can take a look at this. I'm like, that is the direction that we want to go. This would be chain abstraction where you don't know what's going on underneath the hood, and that will bring new users in. And on top of that, they just dropped this little gem a couple of days ago. It looks like they're venturing into the AI realm. And I was kind of curious because why is that? And I think it's because the two co-founders, Alexander Skadanov and Ilya Poskin, they both have history, not just in blockchain technology, but also AI as well. So what I did was I asked Ilya to come on just to explain what is going on behind the scenes and the new happenings for Near Protocol. So let's talk to Ilya right now. So Ilya, thanks for coming on for the show for second time or third time? Can't remember. Second time. Second time. All right, great. So this was the story. And I was taking a look at because AI is the new different type of, well, I guess it would be the most interesting thing coming out for as far as Web3 and of course in the entire world, especially with NVIDIA jumping up to the third largest company in the entire world at I think around $2.4 trillion. And because of AI, I think that's gonna be the narrative for Web3 as well. It looks like you guys are getting into that space even more so. So I wanna bring you on just to talk about, first of all, AI, then talk about partnerships. And then we're just gonna talk real quickly about the TVL and the unique active wallets that are going on. So let's just break this down, Ilya. So what is going on here with AI and Near? Yeah, so maybe for those who are not familiar, um, both Nier's background as well as both me and my co-founder's background is all AI. So I am uh, worked at Google Research on machine learning and AI, um, and I'm a co-author on a paper that introduced Transformers, which is the technology that's powering ChatGPT, Midjourney, Gemini, etc. Wow. And and my co-founder, you know, have uh, worked at OpenAI, have uh, kind of done uh, some of the foundational model training. And so the, like, we always believed and, you know, invested in, uh, in the AI technology and actually near started as AI. So near AI originally was teaching machines to code back in 17, 
and it was a little bit too early. It didn't, we didn't have like a research budget of hundreds of millions of dollars. And so we ended up seeing the opportunity to actually create an incentive layer for crowdsourcing of data and other things through blockchain. And that's kind of how we got an, oh, actually we need to fix the blockchain part first. Now, uh, you know, blockchain part is pretty much uh, on its way. Uh, we have a lot of things working right near is the most used blockchain. Uh, we're getting a lot more kind of uh, um, various applications. And so at the same time, the kind of technology evolution of AI is starting to heat up to a level where it's actually becoming interestingly dangerous if we continue in, in the current direction where centralized companies, right? Few centralized companies have a massive flywheel where they already have all the target users they building better AI models that are extracting more revenue, right? Extracting fr from individual user. So like kind of manipulating them to spend more time and then leverage that to build better AI models. And that's a very dangerous uh, situation because as this flywheel kind of accelerates, this company is going to keep, you know, growing the pack and kind of extracting everything out and creating this uh, separation even further. And so, that's where the concept of user-owned AI coming is like, if we want to fulfill the vision of Web3 of self-sovereignty, we need to have AI component kind of be in the hands of users, in the control of users, in the control of communities, not in the hands of for-profit companies. Um, and NIR is in, in the best place to uh, build the home for user-owned AI, both because of our background, as well as there's already a bunch of projects that started building kind of on top of uh, uh, near infrastructure and you know the scalability and the user kind of users that we have already on platform and so we're doing two things one is we are working with a whole host of projects uh, that are building in in this intersection right this is everything from data compute cloud kind of inference uh, as well as some of the agentic uh, AI frameworks as well as some new use cases and then at the same time we have established back near AI and so near AI is a specific R&D team that's focused on teaching machines to code, specifically Web3 applications. So again, Web3 right now has 7,000 full-time developers. This is less than like one product organization at Google. So like one product at Google developed by more engineers than the whole Web3. So if we want to have competitive products uh, that offer better experience, we need to actually you know, leg up and uh, help people build uh, in the space. And so the benefit is we now have kind of foundational infrastructure to actually uh, automate a lot of the software engineering parts that we need. And so, so near AI is focused on what we call AI developer. It's ability to, you know, it just prompt like, oh, I want to build a Flappy Bird game and it, you know, generates code and actually uh, you can start iterating, oh, I want to add this feature, I want a spaceship, you know, they should send lasers, mm -hmm. uh, just as an example. So that's kind of like two parts we're working on out of uh, near foundation. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff going on in the ecosystem, but uh, I'm, I'm encouraging everyone to continue kind of uh, keeping tune on that. Excellent. I, so let me, let me rewind a little bit, because I remember back in the early days of the internet, it was all about just getting people on and getting people on board and then for them to not really have to look underneath the hood. That was the first problem. And the second problem was when we, when we took a look at these, these, these social media presence, it was just come on to the social media, just come onto the Facebooks, just come on to the Instagrams and just kind of be here for free. And then all of a sudden the data was collected. So it looks like what you guys are trying to do is kind of, it's the same type of thing that's going on right now. I've got ChatGPT on my, my phone. I use Gemini through Google for AI services. I use Grok over on uh, X or what was called Twitter before. So how are you, you guys looks like you were doing this just to break this down. And he said this in, in, in the post, as far as like with near, as far as AI, this will include core infrastructure investment, data collection, crowdsourcing, curation, and rewarding creators. I guess that would also be people who actually use it. Access to compute, novel ways to monetize it, verifiability of training. Can you talk to this real quick and just kind of really dig nail drill down into that part of it yeah let's let's dig uh, i mean uh, kind of uh, dig in into some of those use cases right so i mean a good example is actually data because there is going to be a lot of different kind of sub use cases there right and specifically for creators right you know we are creating content right now 
And uh, at the same time, you know, you can imagine the TikTok of the future or YouTube of the future will be all generated content, right? It will just generate for you individually exactly what, you know, interested in. But it needs to combine some real information, right? It needs to be trained on something. It needs to have new news, right? You know, you're just talking about news. You just talked about you know, what's happening in the world. Like all of that is going to be inputs. And how do you think they're going to be rewarding the creators? Similarly with search, right? Being replaced by just answers, traffic to the websites is going to be reduced. And so again, like the search is actually using all that information, but uh, the kind of, there's no way to f actually for the reward, for the kind of revenue to be distributed back to the original people who actually contributed the information and content. And so that's where like, let's just say like, this is a problem. Forget mm -hmm. about Web3. That is a problem. Okay, well, how do we solve this? Well, we need a way to, you know, somehow uh, have the content, have it, you know, authenticated, have a way who originally produced it, and then license it somehow. And then we want to pay people, and it's probably going to be micropayments based on some usage, right? Well, all of that, you know, if you do it with traditional Web2 infrastructure, then you have a company and then, you know, they're going to try to extract some margin on top of it and they're going to take part of it, you know, in their pockets. Or you can have a Web3 system with micropayments, you know, that are 100 times cheaper than Web2. And at the same time, the ownership of this platform is distributed among its users as well. Right. So like Web3 is, is a way to solve some of these problems that kind of Web2 now is having by introducing new types of platforms. Similarly for compute, right? I mean, we already seen obviously Nvidia uh, price shooting up. Everybody's building more compute, and at the same time, you know, people looking for compute. Like, there's clearly a marketplace that's right now highly inefficient. You need to call up AWS to like, you know, book for ten million dollars a year uh, to be able to access things. And so, you know, there's people already building compute marketplaces, but again, this is currently right now a very like a data center to a big startup game. Like how do we lower down the barrier? How do we have people access actually, if the future is the compute, how do we get people access to this future from a you know investment monetary perspective as well? So how do we monetize it, but also how do we create a novel way to um, help people to invest in that? Like what is the compute coin of the future in a way it would be? So stuff like this, right? Like those are use cases, you know, uh, similarly, I really like this idea of uh, right now decentralized social right been a really cool thing, but it, it didn't catch it. Do, it doesn't catch on because you join decentralized social, there's nobody else there, or mm -hmm. there's like few people, and like it's an even bigger bubble. Right. But imagine actually having a bunch of AI agents that are actually interacting in their own world. They're posting co content, comments, they, and so instead of joining an empty space, you're actually joining some world full of you know. Uh, agents, you can create new characters, you can create new events in the world, and you can start interacting with something. And in a way, it's a game, but at the same time, it creates a new substrate for social that's, again, not owned by any single company, not owned by any single platform. It's not maximized for you to spend most of your time there, but it's actually optimized for you to engage and be, uh, you know, entertain or, or learn uh, because it's like maybe these agents are learning together with you. So you're going to create new experiences and new worlds that are combining these technologies and kind of solving some of the problems. And at the same time, it's a major yeah, like shift, platform shift. I think one of the things is Web3 is like, is we've been kind of trying to like build the same products that Web2 had and they just got better. But now with AI, we can actually build a better product. So we can create like a more interesting experiences and uh, leverage incentives to actually bootstrap them and grow them to the massive extent and, and keep them user and community owned. Holy smokes. Ilya, that is a, thank you for that answer. That is a massive, that is a massive undertaking you guys are gonna try to do. And I, I tip my hat to you guys. I've been, and of course, just for, as, a, as a note here for everybody watching at home, I have a very large bag of, of near protocol. And the reason why I invested into you guys is, of course, we talked about this before, when you guys get into Sweatcoin and you brought those 120 to 200 million users from Web 2 over to Web 3, there was no hiccups, there was no problems, there was no uh, chain shutdowns, it just worked. And I couldn't believe it. And I told, uh, I told Oleg, who is the co-founder of Sweatcoin, I go, if they can do this, I don't think they're going to, but if they can, I'll be a big true believer. And so far, you guys have done it. So congratulations on that one. Let's shift gears a little bit, going from... AI 
let's talk about, because these are great things we talk about, but we have to make progress. Talk real quick to us about some of the partnerships that you guys have going on. So I know that you guys have partnered up with Polygon to build a ZK WSM L2 provider. And also because of you, I believe probably your history, you have a partnership with Google Cloud. So just talk to us real quick about the things that are going on, maybe behind the scenes, the partnerships or things that are happening. And we can even go back to AI if you want to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a there's a whole kind of uh, multiple directions, right? I mean, the, the reality is like it's a decentralized ecosystem. There's a lot of stuff going on, right? Yeah. And so, um, I mean, just to give you a few examples, right? Uh, the near DA, right? The data availability layer that is, uh, you know, designed to provide services like from near blockchain to uh, layer twos on Ethereum. They launched with RSS three, which is top fifteen uh, layer two. And uh, the the costs for for SS three went from two thousand dollars a day to like three dollars a day, wow. right? By just using near DA, uh, and so that's just an example of like actually you know partnering with some of the Ethereum ecosystem and enabling them to actually leverage some of the same you know as you said for Sweatcoin infrastructure that's been able to scale and able to uh, support uh, millions of users. Obviously, we have hot. Uh, I mean, you were just showing it uh, before, right? But um, the hot is uh, one of the biggest apps in Web3 right now with, uh, yeah, over 2.5 million uh, weekly active. They have, uh, I think, over 7 million users so far participated. They launched um, kind of in February. So it's been growing kind of tremendously. Uh, they just uh, partnered with Base. And so... This is in this chain abstraction thesis, right? Integrating pretty much near kind of as an entry point where you can go to all other blockchain uh, blockchains and interact with them and actually um, leverage kind of near account model, ease of, ease of onboarding kind of coordination, but then actually access liquidity and applications on other chains. So base is just the beginning. They have a lot of other kind of layer twos lined up um, we have, you know, folks who are using this technology to then integrate with Bitcoin and other kind of layer ones as well. So there's a lot of things going on on that on that side. On the AI side, I mean, there's a bunch of partnerships coming up. Uh, I'm not going to spoil that just yet, but uh, yeah, stay tuned. Uh, again, this is kind of is uh, one of the main directions where I'm going to be spending time on. But just to mention. Uh, something to look forward to is, as I mentioned, we have this AI developer. So we have a prototype and we're going to actually want to engage community and not just near, but like broader Web3 community and anyone who has an idea for an application, we want to actually engage you. And uh, uh, you'll see kind of, you know, some, some of the things that are already there, as well as potentially you get benefits of, you know, this application has been built for you. And so uh, you may be able to, you know, launch that later yourself. So hmm. stay tuned for that. It's coming in a few weeks. Um, we're going to try to engage as much as possible, uh, kind of broader ecosystem. Another undertaking. Sounds good. All right. So then to finish this up, I have been a part of a couple of different projects. And one of the things that uh, project leads are always talking about is, well, you know, Nier is great and it's doing great stuff chain abstraction, now the AI, and now getting into different projects. But, you know, that TVL, that TVL isn't, isn't too much. And when I take a look at uh, different sites, we can take a look at the unique active wallets. And, of course, Kai Ching and Hot is very far up there. This is on DAP radar. And then, of course, Pixels, and you got Matrix, whatever that is, and Sweat Economy, Jupiter Exchange, people know. And you guys are always in the top five, top six, somewhere around there for unique active wallets. But as far as, like, TVL and such, if we do the first you know, up to number 10, you're not there yet, but you have, you have some monsters, the Uniswaps, the balancers, the ring protocol and stuff like that. But I did notice as far as TVL goes, you guys are pretty much up there as far as with USDC. There's a link in the description, usdc.cool. And we can see that near is about uh, 200 million for TVL. And if I take a look at another site for TVL for all chains, it looks like you guys are almost at, uh, well, you passed 400 million so far. So talk to us about real quick about the TVL and how things are moving forward for you. Yeah, so I mean, I'll acknowledge uh, kind of 2023, we focused a lot on users and uh, that's been um, in, in a way kind of neglecting some of the more DeFi and financial use cases. 
And so since the beginning of this year, we have uh, made sure that, you know, we like investing and attracting folks in the ecosystem to really uh, also engage in financial use cases. So, I mean, we had a partnership with Frax, we had a few other partnerships like that, uh, as well as just um, uh, kind of working across, you know, the ecosystem to attract people to use uh, Nier's DeFi infrastructure. And then, as I mentioned, like HOT, for example, brought uh, hundreds of thousands of traders through their platform, through their application site Telegram, to actually engage through ref finance, through uh, uh, borrow, etc. And now they're actually kind of intermixing our liquidity with base. And so there's like a, a new contest going on right now, actually launched a couple of days ago. Uh, so there's a lot of things going on now. And that's why, you know, if you go back to DeFi Llama and actually look from the January 2024, that graph kind of tells you a lot, right? And so... Uh, and again, inviting everyone to continue building and participating in the ecosystem. Um, right now, there's a lot of kind of energy on building out this kind of financial components paired together with the user base now that we have and kind of this massive, again, use cases of Kaiching, Sweatcoin and HOT, but bringing millions of users to engage in your protocols. Ilya, great. I appreciate the response. And I can see what you're talking about here with uh, DeFi Llama. If we go back to January 2024, you guys had really not too much sub 100 as far as TVL. And I can see where you're going. And that's the trajectory in the right direction. So, Ilya, thanks for stopping by and uh, talking to us. We'll put this uh, information out. And everybody, if you're looking for the links and uh, for all the things we just talked about as far as the websites, the TVL, and the different prospects of what Nier is going to, there's a link in the description. You can check that out. Ilya, any last words of wisdom for people in Web3? I think that it's time for applications. This is a really like, yes, there's a lot of still infrastructure to be built, but at this time we have kind of the core pieces. We have them scalable, people easy to uh, onboard, a simplifying experience with AI as well. Uh, for example, mid-base wallet offers like a AI interface to transact across, not even near, but all the other chains through chain signatures and chain abstraction. And so now it's time for really truly new use cases and then leveraging AI and Web3 and providing something that is 10x better than Web2. So if you're building something like this, uh, come talk to us. We would love to support that. Awesome. All right, everybody. Well, Ilya, thanks again for the second time. We'll have you back when things come up. or It's, it's an open invite, buddy. Anytime you want to come back is fine. So everybody, thanks so much for stopping by. Let's jump back to the main. Great. So Ilya, thanks for stopping by. We appreciate it. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. Again, all the things we talked about, me and Ilya, there are links in the description. You can check those out. But that's it for today. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you. And I'll see you on the next one.